Alrighty then, successful indie author, five minute focus, episode 850. What does Amazon need when an author passes away? This is a tragic situation, especially if the author did not set up joint accounts, as in the Amazon account is not a joint account. Then you're going to have some real problems because if you're not on that account, you shouldn't be in that account. <clears throat> so if you don't have a, sh if you don't have the password, then you're going to have problems. You have to get an order from a probate judge in order to access that account. Now, dealing with Amazon, if you're not the account holder, is difficult at the best of times. And when the author passes away and the, the survivors are trying to access things, <clears throat> these aren't the best of times. So if you don't have the password, the challenges are you need to go to probate, you need to get an order, you need to cancel a credit card that is being used to pay advertising because that advertising will be served, it'll spend, and you can't get the revenue from that, from those ads, from those sales. That goes into like into hold until they can pay it out. Now, because <clears throat> you contact them and let them know that, oh, hey, this person passed away. So all the financial transactions stop on the date of death. Yes, that's how it works. Until a probate judge issues the order, ah, yes, you can send it to this account. Because you can't just step in and say, oh, their money is all owed to me instead. It doesn't work that way. Because scammers would run afoul, would run crazy with that kind of stuff. Man. <clears throat> well, I was having a bad morning with coughing and stuff. <clears throat> so, before you contact them and close stuff down, if you can get into the account, if you do have access to the password, copy down the verbs, keywords, ISBN, everything from each of the entries. Go into uh, <clears throat> the KDP bookshelf. And then go into each entry, no matter how many books there are, whatever time it takes, and copy down all of that stuff into a metadata file, like a Word document, for each of those books. You can download the file itself. It's an HTML format, but you can work with that. It's better than having no file. I don't know if you have access to the uh, author's computer or not, but you got to do what you got to do. <clears throat> And then the works can be republished to account and coordinating with Amazon, you may be able to get any reviews and stuff like that transferred over to the new account. But they got to unpublish them first, unless you have a joint account. If you have a joint account where you both use the same Amazon account, which is dangerous if you have a business account with Amazon for publishing your books. But <clears throat> that if you don't have a joint account, then you have to you have to unpublish them and have to publish under a new account. <clears throat> so much depends on the author's estate. If they're intestate, that means died without a will, then you've got challenges. You've got significant challenges because now you go to your state's intestate rules. What are the rules of succession and who gets what and how does that have to be separated? Because if you have multiple dependents and your state's rules are equal share to each dependent, well, then you have to liquidate whoever the executor is, and the probate judge will will uh, designate a, a uh, an executor if you don't have a will. And then that person has to liquidate the estate and separate the shares out as per whatever's uh, uh, whatever the rules are. <clears throat> well... That means selling all your stuff. It doesn't mean putting your books into a trust and republishing them and keeping that going. No, it means selling everything and splitting it up. So they may be able to convince the probate judge, ah, the value of this, and we'll separate out the, the royalties later. And it all depends on the judge and how you present it. So if you're an author, oh my God, don't do that to your heirs. Make sure you have a will. <clears throat> The worst thing you can do as an author, especially if you're, if you're realizing any kind of success, is pass away intestate, pass away without a will, because you have just 
taken significant steps of destroying your own legacy. Don't do that. But if the worst happens and you pass away young, you get hit by a car and uh, everything was going great, you've got young children, oh my God, <clears throat> then the heirs, the, the executor, those people are going to struggle. Contact Amazon. Make sure you get the information from each of those files and <clears throat> then uh, uh, be ready to republish. So now you're on a crash course of learning everything that your author, your author uh, uh, spouse, your author partner spent years learning. You have, you're on a crash course to learn all this stuff because you're going to republish. But what you can do is you can incrementally republish one book at a time <clears throat> and say republished in honor of in memoriam and, uh, and move forward from there. You don't have to do it all at once because it's, you're physically impossible to do it all at once, especially if they've got any number of titles. It, it is a difficult, it's a difficult business, but they embraced it because they love writing. And now the worst has happened. They moved on, but that doesn't mean you don't have any more income from those books. Those books have potential. They have longevity. They have the, the potential to fund people for a long time. Look at L. Ron Hubbard's estate and Writers of the Future. They're just past four decades, 40 years of L. Ron Hubbard's estate funding the Writers of the Future, the contest, the book, all of that good stuff. What if you're an LLC? It depends on your state rules. You got to dig out your state. What does your state say? You still have to have a designee for that company, whether it's you or anybody else. Because if it's a, it's a uh, sole proprietorship, although an LLC, it still falls under the same rules. It goes to the heirs of that owner. If there are multiple owners, that would be in the business organization. At, uh, each, each owner gets X amount. Now, if you have three owners and they're all getting us, then that money goes in there. However, they're not supposed to touch money. That's the uh, person who passed away. A big challenge, big challenge, because especially if that, like I have an author account because USAA doesn't do business accounts. And so my wife's not on it. I did had her in later, but it one when I first uh, organized it, but I have a separate account there that, Hey, it's uh, the, it would freeze the second I passed away. Cause that's how the law works. So please understand a lot of this goes on and probate judge is not the enemy. They can help you immensely. If you, if uh, your author spouse passed away, without having a will because that probate judge is going to give you the orders to access the bank account, access the Amazon account, access all of the things you need to, to get that business back up and running. There will be a hiccup in revenue and it's not going to, it's not going to disappear. Amazon doesn't keep that money. If the sales, it just goes into a, a separate area until such time as they can pay it out according to a judge's order. There you go. A lot of information, very short amount of time. It's just, it's, as an author, please, please, please take care of your your uh, heirs. Take care of anyone you want to take care of in a will, and don't leave them hanging. Peace, fellow humans.